Adventurers, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. This is Tom. I'm here with Lotus. You guys know the drill, but we've got a new overlay. I decided, you know what? We've been talking so much about Daggerfall and so many people haven't really played Daggerfall. So I thought it would be a lot of fun behind us for the live stream and for the video version of this podcast to put some Daggerfall content, which is actually Lotus's <laughs> last or most recent playthrough of, of Daggerfall. So uh, right now it's like a load screen. It, the timing on this perfect worked out perfect because there's nothing happening but you're gonna see all sorts of fun stuff happening in the background and who knows maybe he'll die and things but welcome back yeah, lotus how's it going certainly. how's it going man uh it's good it's good we were just discussing uh the varying levels of heat around the world uh, as we have our new season switch and it's uh it's a little warm here but quite enjoyable at the moment nice we're in, nice we're at a nice 80 freedom units at the moment oh good oh good those those free that's what f stands for yes freedom units okay I thought it was something else, but I guess I was wrong. Nope, nope, nope. Hmm. Hmm. All right, but today we're continuing our conversation about Daggerfall. We've been talking about the main quest line. We were talking about the Dark Bros last week, and Lotus is going to be continuing his playthrough, and eventually we'll get back to the end of the main quest line. But there are lots of other things to talk about. This week, we decided we would dig into the bestiary. It always looks like bestiary to me, but it's pronounced bestiary. Yeah, I, I call it bestiary, even though I kind of know better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like bestiary so just sounds yeah. right, doesn't it? it yeah. I mean, I mean, it makes sense as a bestiary, too, because it's full of the beasts of the game, but it's just like pronunciation, English and all that. Yeah. So we're talking about all the different kinds of monsters and creatures and animals and things that you can come across in Daggerfall, because just like so many other topics, going back to this early iteration of the Elder Scrolls, you're going to find that there are some things that are included that aren't included in the later games and some things that aren't included in here that you would expect and uh, we're going to get into the details so right we've done bestiaries or best years see i'm already doing it uh, <laughs> right. we've done bestiaries before uh a lot of them you know for daedric creatures and stuff like that so it's interesting because this game has like you said a little of what we what we know and what what's kind of been phased out but it's interesting because some of the original versions of even some of the stuff we get is a little different than what you see in the later iterations. Um, and it's pretty interesting, especially when playing through it, running into what they consider the scale difficulty of certain things, where some things are way more difficult than you would expect or are in later on games. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get into it because this was a very different type of game back then, but yet it set the grounds for a lot of the things that we have later in the series. So I think you're going to see some of the details as we dig into this. As usual, we are referencing an article from the UESP because they they do such a good, they're the best wiki on the internet, even though it, you know, we're a little bit biased because it's about Elder Scrolls. Clearly not biased as they <laughs> sponsor our other shows. <laughs> <laughs> but but we're, we're genuinely speaking, yeah. I, I look at a lot of wikis, I look at a lot of content for my other shows, and there's just something, the quality here is so good. So we're going to be reading through some of the details that we're pulling from this, but then also going into other details that aren't listed here like we usually yeah. do. But uh, here, yep. let's let's just start. We're just going to start at the top of the bestiary page because there are a lot of details about these creatures that you wouldn't have anticipated. So, for example, the first bullet point here says higher level levels generally referred to level 14, at least and higher. However, it is possible to encounter more dangerous foes as early as level six. So we've talked about level scaling in the later games. And even in Daggerfall, there is a aspect of level scaling where you don't really come across higher level monsters until at least level six, but usually about level 14. Right. And it's kind of the situation of some of the stuff is intentionally there, but there's a lot of procedural generation, which we've talked about many times uh, related to Daggerfall and Arena as well. Um, so if it's essentially procedurally generating your enemies in a certain area or in a dungeon or whatnot, that's more of where you're going to get the scaling bits as opposed to like, okay, there needs to be a lich at the end of this dungeon. Well, okay, the right. lich is always going to be there regardless of what you do. I run into that problem more than once where I'm like, this is way above my quest grade, but yeah. we're going to try to make this work. Yeah. Whereas what maybe spawns and comes at you through memory well that seems like that'll adjust they'll try to keep it in your ballpark level right and the liches always seem to give you stitches because according to this next bullet point get this all monsters of a particular type 
have the same level throughout the game. That means rats are always level 1 enemies, and ancient liches are always level 21. So if you do come across them at an earlier level, even at 14, they're still going to be significantly higher level than you, regardless of what dungeon you run them into. Or even at level 7, like I did in my playthrough, because I, uh... Well, we had talked about there's a lot of ways that the main quest can interweave, and they don't really handhold you to the next step all the time. And I apparently had jumped much farther ahead in the quest line, and uh, I believe it was level 7 where I ran into one, and I basically needed to convince him to shoot splash damage spells into a wall next to him to splash damage himself <laughs> because I couldn't kill him. <laughs> right. You know, when in doubt... As you do. <laughs> ...have them destroy themselves, right? That's Exactly. Yeah. It's a moral <laughs> victory. It's, there you go. So it goes on, it says, aside from its role in selecting the random dungeon inhabitants, a l enemy's level is relevant if it is a spellcaster, since the magnitude, chance, and duration of spells are determined by caster level. So the level has a lot to do with how the enemies interact, when they show up, how they interact, all of that. The next point says, an enemy's skills also depend on its level. The value of any skill will always be five times the enemy's level plus a starting value of 30. So the math here is the higher level, it ramps up considerably because it ramps up five times. Every level increase of a type of enemy is actually a five times higher skill value across the board. It also goes on and says, for example, a level 20 enemy or higher has all skills at 100. A rat, all skills at 35, right? 30 plus level one times five is 35. For non-human adversaries, skills in the six schools of magic can, can never surpass 80. So at least there's a kind of a like top a there built in skill ceiling so that not everybody's like this grand master mage that lives in like a hovel off to the side but they happen to be a high level i was like oh well you know i've only lived here with my aging mother for years but also you know i can cast level 100 fire tornadoes <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah and the All spells right. the spells are very potent so one of the points of recommendation uh is this the fighting strategies for each creature contain recommendations based on daggerfall gamers personal experiences in general spell reflection resistance and absorption are very useful when fighting any monster able to cast spells it would be worth your while to invest in these spells or in items which can cast them so if you are going into fighting against magical creatures or magic casting creatures or individuals and you happen to be a fighter with no ability to deal with the spells, then you are at huge disadvantage in Daggerfall. Whereas in later yeah, games like sure. Skyrim, you just run around, you dodge the you dodge the spells a little bit, you hit the thing on the head with your hammer and eventually right. you win. There's not a right? chance to hit necessarily and stuff like that where it's, right. you know... If, if it connects in the screen visually, then you probably connected, whereas opposed to these, it's like it can slug right in your chest and it's like, oh, miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're not going to go through every single point, but this one I found interesting as well. Uh, every non-humanoid enemy has a characteristic noise. Click the associated sound files to hear them. So as you're going through US, USP or these articles, you can actually click the noises. Uh, quite often, a creature can be heard long before it can be seen. So... By recognizing the sounds, you can prepare for what awaits you in the darkness ahead. It may also make the task of finding your quest target a lot easier. And this is interesting because it, at first this sounds like, well, yeah, no, duh. If you're coming across a zombie, it's going to sound like a zombie, right? But no, because the way these games worked, the difficulty was much higher. So the idea would be that you would have a sense of what might be in the room ahead before you go in the room ahead. And then you could change your equipment or prepare different spells or whatever in order to deal with them so that you're not just running headlong into everything. Similar right. to like a D&D &D campaign where yeah. you're as a group of adventurers, uh, adventurers, you're like, OK, now we're going to deal with ghosts. Let's let's make sure we have skills and abilities set up while we rest tonight in order to go fight ghosts tomorrow. Yeah. And in the older Elder Scrolls games, one of the things to note is like, you know, there were certain creatures that had like thresholds of things that would work against them um it, it's a thing that's actually sort of only recently been dropped for the most part but yeah. like originally undead needed silver right or, yeah there's or, echoes of this in like oblivion where exactly silver weapons say, and magic are useful it went against all the way up to ghosts. oblivion it's really skyrim was the first one that really didn't do too much with that but like and if you didn't have an appropriate thing you could maybe 
magically enchanted so that it's like okay well now at least it's magically enchanted so you can use it again but like yeah yeah the 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 you know the material the weapon was made out of mattered back then much more than just i get more protection or damage out of this there was elements to what the stuff it was made out of really mattered i think this was one of the things that really drew me into playing oblivion as my first real for i mean i dabbled in morrowind a little bit but but we've talked about that i bounced off it pretty pretty easily uh but when oblivion came out it it grabbed me and one of the things that grabbed me about it was that i did a quest where i had to fight a ghost and i couldn't hit the ghost i was like yes why can i not damage the ghost and i had to figure it out and i was like oh I need to find a silver sword. And even though I was leveled above the point where silver was one of the better weapon options, I still had to plan around going and finding a silver sword. I think I found a merchant who was selling one. Right. And I went and bought it. And then I went back and I was able to fight the ghost. And there's something that felt way more intentional about that kind of thing rather than I'm just a steamroller and everything I come across I can just kind of bowl through that's one of the things I do wish they would bring back to the series actually I that was one of the few things that I really was like eh, I don't really like that Skyrim did away with that and yeah. they didn't bring it back for Elder Scrolls online either it's it's kind of not a thing at the moment where right I, which is one fine. of the features I thought was pretty neat yeah I don't think it needs to be an ESO I think ESO has a different focus uh, it's less about the world feeling like a real place and more sure. about uh, it feeling like a, a theme park where you can run around with your friends or by yourself and just kind of do all the things that you want to do and collect stuff. Um, it's a little bit more, uh, it's a little less intense, I guess you could say. Yeah, a little bit. So anyway, so let's get into some of the creature types. There are a lot of standard creature types. We've got animals and monsters and humanoids. And uh, let's just dig into the animals here. This section is kind of interesting. It says animals are mundane creatures or oversized versions of them. They never carry any treasure, though you may still retrieve arrows from their corpses, which was a thing in Daggerfall. Sure was. That's that was a part of the series really yeah, early on the body. Sometimes you will see the arrow in the inventory that you're looting through, which is really I was kind of blown away that that was a thing. Yeah, that's great. Uh, certain animals are carriers of disease. No special materials are required to harm animals. So you don't need like silver weapons or whatever. Yeah, blood bludgeon the cat and the cat's not going to do so well until the cat fights back. <laughs> right. It's sick of you. Right. So the animals that are included, and these are animals that you come across as enemies. These are not passive animals. These are not like, you know, house cats or the birds that are chirping in the tree. No. Things like that, right? They're rats, not skeevers yet. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So we've well, got... Yeah, you'll, you'll see at least more rats than skeevers and stuff like that. Yeah, so let's go through the list. We've got uh, giant bats, giant scorpions, grizzly bears, rats, not skeevers, Mm -hmm. uh, saber tooth tigers, slaughterfish, slaughterfish are slaughterfish are there. They're yeah. much more horrific. Um, <laughs> they're even worse. <laughs> they're enormous in this game. They're like giant eels just covered in teeth. Yeah, um, by by the by Skyrim, they're not so bad. Fuel. Morrowind, they're still pretty terrible. So yeah, Morrowind, they're pretty awful. I mean, they're never pleasant. They right. look kind of derpy in uh, Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> They're just like that little yellow fat thing. with. They kind of look like a chubby piranha. Chubby piranha. It's just like a circle with like a displeased face. <laughs> with a grumpy, a grumpy circle yeah, face. Yeah, a little grumpy face. <laughs> so slaughterfish and then spiders. Um, and you would think maybe there would be more animals than that, but there's not. This is this is the list. That was the list. That was the list. And then Always there's... loving those spiders. I, I, yeah. It's just such a common thing in fantasy games. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But because I, you know, part of I think part of a fantasy world is throwing people into situations that get reactions. Right. And a lot of people don't like spiders. Yeah. So like that's why they so I, I get it. It's like, here's a thing that universally people are not a fan of. <laughs> right, right, right. So, OK, so you got creatures like that and some of them are carriers of disease. So you got to be careful about that. Like they bite you, you get the disease, that kind of thing. But otherwise, they don't give you a whole lot in this case of treasure. You don't really get much off of them. And they're just kind of creatures in the world. So you got to deal with them. But then there are monsters. Monsters are fantastical creatures, often possessing various magical abilities. These can range from magical attacks to various magical resistances. And many monsters can only be harmed by weapons made of special materials. All monsters have an associated language skill. Which is wild. What? All monsters can talk in some language. 
Uh, sure can. Also, unlike animals, you can find some treasure on the corpses of most monsters. Okay. So they're like a step up from animals in a few different ways. You get treasure from them, but they also have language skills, which means that if you can learn their languages, you can talk to them and understand them. <laughs> It seems that way. You get like, uh, from what I understand, you get some communication with them. It was that thing you could do in um, Battlespire as well? Like you could kind of communicate, but there's like different language skills you can get. Um, I didn't go into any of them because I'm very unlikable on my character. I have like a personality <laughs> of 12, so nobody likes me, even if they can't speak my language. So I figured it was kind of a waste of skill to go into something like that. <laughs> Why well, speak their language if it's just going to piss them off more? Wait, right, all I'm going to do is learn that somebody doesn't like me in a different language. <laughs> That's I think that's a pretty good point. Yeah, I think you can kind of just tell by the tone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at some point. I was gonna say simply asking for directions and people just like spit at my character. I'm like, very good then. <laughs> cool. I don't need to understand your words great, to get great. the message. Great, I get it. You're not a fan. <laughs> Got it. So the different monsters include centaur. They're they're in this. I mean, you something that has been off and on throughout the series, but they yeah. series, but something they really haven't done much with in quite a while mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is the yeah. centaur thing it certain kinds of okay so aside before we get to the rest of the monsters yeah, one yeah. of the things that you see in a lot of fantasy are monsters that are pulled from mythology and different types of mythology right, right? centaur uh harpies things like that are pulled from greek mythology then you have dragons which are across multiple mythologies but then you also have uh, uh gargoyles or I don't know, imps or spriggans like, that come from different, sure. different mythologies, depending on where you get them or nymphs, which I think is another Greek one. Um, but it, as series seem to go on, and this has, seems to happen with Elder Scrolls as well, oftentimes they'll take some of those that seem to be uh, pulled from something else and they'll rename them or they'll redesign them in later games. Yeah, they'll kind of make them their own. Right. So like, it's weird to me that you can jump into Diablo 4 and you can still fight balrogs because a balrog right. is very much a jrr tolkien that's just straight up lord of the rings thing yeah right it is directly out of lord of the rings it is not a creature that existed in mythology before that there may have been demonic creatures that are similar to it but it, sure but it's specifically named balrog is a lord of the rings monster right so i i get pulling that stuff out over time even though diablo didn't do it but what about like centaur i mean i guess I, you could see it's like uh, world General of warcraft mythology has or something? centaurs yeah. still and they're right you know like yeah the stuff that's that's very general it's uh, i don't know it seems like sometimes they the shy away from it, an elder scrolls game had a centaur was actual elder scrolls legends the card game um because it's been under like it hasn't really been used for quite a while unless i'm just forgetting an instance of it but it's not not one of the more common things whereas like just on the note of it we'll get into it in a second but like the idea of <clears throat> having something be you know based on something but it's your own like atronox they don't have like elementals in the elder scrolls series right yeah they have atronox which i personally mm -hmm. think is a way cooler name but <laughs> and it and it just, makes them a little bit different because well, right, we can talk about at unique. atronox in a little bit because right, we'll get to up. atronox but it just on the note of like a, a twist on something that does sort of exist in other mythologies but it's they made it theirs right right so in daggerfall we have centaur and dragonlings not dragons dragonlings <sighs> Uh, drow, dr dreg. I don't know how to pronounce yeah, this one. I think it's supposed to be dreg. Dreg. So those show up, so. even though they're hard to pronounce, really early yes. in the series. Uh, Sorry, my dog's barking in the background. Uh, I can't even hear. Gargoyles, giants, harpy, imps, lamia, nymphs, and spriggan. So a lot of these you see later in the, in the in the series i mean include especially like dragons or like dragonlings but also giants like the idea that like giants were in it from a very early point and yep. what's also interesting about this is these are monsters not humanoids a giant is not designated as a humanoid it a is humanoid, a monster it's designated a monster right yeah. a centaur is not a human a lamia is not a humanoid even though they have human ish traits it's Heck, a game back um, but, and you're not, a, they're not a playable race yet, but originally, uh, you, you had in arena, it, you had lizard mans instead of <laughs> right. like, and, and you had, um, instead of Argonian, yeah. orcs, 
Orcs right. were not like a playable, fleshed out race. It was just like, eh, here's an orc. Orcs are bad. It's like, oh, <laughs> right. all right. <laughs> right. Sure. You've, you've read and The Lord of the Rings, how, right? Orcs are bad things. Right. And now look how elaborate they are in the series. So it's yeah. like sometimes they just kind of, they haven't gotten to it yet to really explore what it should be. Yeah. So it does feel early with some of these. Um, but the monsters, you kill them, you get treasure some of the time, and that's cool, right? But it seems like they really kept most of the monster development for humanoid kinds of creatures and humanoids include regular people that are just happen to be working for factions that you are against or whatever, but also lots of other kinds of creatures as well. Here's what it says about humanoids on the UESP. It says, in addition to fierce beasts and deadly monstrosities, humanoid foes are often encountered throughout the Iliac Bay. Humanoids often, or I'm sorry, always have the same level as your character, and they can be fairly dangerous at higher levels. If your character level rises during a quest or while in a dungeon, humanoid foes that are already generated, be it as quest adversaries or random dungeon inhabitants, will not rise in level. So you definitely want to make sure you level up early in the dungeon. <laughs> Yeah, so you get an those, advantage. You know, nice and easy. Just plan out with such meticulous <laughs> detail that right. you know when you're going to level up, but make sure that they've already generated all these humans in the zone you're in. That's right. Piece yes. of cake. Mm -hmm. You got this. Uh, they will remain at the same level as your character when you accept the quest or enter the dungeon. Humanoids carry equipment like orcs and fall into three categories. Warriors, which are heavily armored and use ranged attacks at a distance. This includes, and this like these, these little subcategories for all these different classes, right? Uh, archer, barbarian, guard, knight, monk, ranger, and warrior. Then there are mages. They have the ability to cast spells. Battle mage, healer, mage, knight blade, sorcerer. Why does this feel like I'm in the character creator for Oblivion? Weird. Weird. Uh, then there's thieves, lightly armored and often attack rapidly, also use ranged attacks at a distance. Acrobat, assassin, bard, burglar, rogue, and thief. This feels like the Oblivion character creation uh, list, which is crazy to think about because this game came out 10 years, 12 years before Oblivion. Yep. So I always I always love that they've kind of had these. Well, I guess except for Skyrim, because they didn't really have classes in Skyrim. It was just kind of here you are. But like the class system that used to be in the game, it's amazing how many of the classes had kind of been around for a long time. Yeah. And even in Elder Scrolls Online, a couple of them still exist. Sorcerer is a pretty generic thing or whatever, but they even like Nightblades are in the Elder Scrolls Online as a class choice. Right, yeah. Th they've always had certain classes that uh, either seem to be like hybrid classes or just kind of were unique to the series, like Nightblade, uh, Battle Mage, Acrobat. These have always to me felt more like elder scrolls designed classes than things that they were pulling from say dungeons and dragons and sure. i could be wrong about that who knows maybe maybe nightblade shows up in early D &D right. i builds always just assume that there's like going to be some weird esoteric version of something it's like oh well this game actually did it first it's like i had no idea that was a thing but all right, right this is my first example of it then Right, right. So like burglar, that's clearly a Hobbit reference because they refer to him as the burglar of the party. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. Bard, that's D and D thing, you know, like barbarian, that's a D and D thing. But there are some where they, they the slightly misspelled place called Merkwood in the Elder Scrolls <laughs> arena that for some reason they don't talk about anymore. Really? <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> if you are a humanoid and you are the type of humanoid that can cast spells, then there's a spell table and there are spells that you can that, not you that the npcs or enemies that you're the fighting royal you <laughs> that anybody who's of these levels and a spellcaster can have access to specifically the enemies you're fighting so at level one and two enemy spellcasters can cast ice bolt and ice storm early spellcasters are clearly just winter mages yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're just refrigerator mechanics <laughs> they're just, that's their job their job is to keep the, <laughs> the drinks yes, cold at the bar just, <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's it a uh, little ice storm inside the cooler keep everything nice and cold mm -hmm. and then, swirl it around and pretend it's a vortex yeah and then hand out the beers yep. right right so when you hit level three or when they hit level three three to five you get lightning silence and spell shield this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting because now and remember this isn't just a specific type of magic user who now at level three to five can cast silence this is anybody 
There's anybody who's right. in this range may have access to these spells. Yeah, there's a chance that they could have one of these. Right. Or so, all of these. Or all of them, right? So, like, it's not like, oh, I know I'm going up against a lich, and a lich has the ability to raise undead things around it, so I need to be aware of that. It's more of, oh, crap, I came across another wizard-type character. I hope he doesn't silence me because my character only casts spells and I need to not be silenced. So you end up in that kind of situation, right? You 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 downplay what something might be, and it turns out it's like something totally different that's beating the crap out of you. Yeah, yeah. So at level six through eight, you get firestorm. Invisibility becomes a thing you have to worry about. Lightning, spell shield, and wizard's fire. Uh, Nine to eleven, you get paralysis and shock. This these all sound like terrible things that you never want to have to deal with. Uh, yeah, paralysis in these <laughs> games is I actually. I'm not sure that I've died to that in this one. I died to it a lot in um, Arena because if you get paralyzed in water, you just drown. Yeah, you're just stuck. You just you, you just drown. That's just the end of the story because you're paralyzed and you're underwater, so you're drowned. I think it's the same in Daggerfall, but off the top of my head, I can't remember if I've met that unfortunate demise in game yet or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's horrible that status sounds, effect. That sounds terrible. Uh, so at level 12 through 14, you get they they may get access to Balina's Antidote, which is like a cure poison spell. So if you go around poisoning things, they can cure themselves. Uh, energy Leech, Fireball, Free Action. How, well, that's always get, good if you're paralyzed <laughs> underwater. You can't get more D&D than Free Action. Yeah, for real. And then uh, Shock. At level 15 through 17... Uh, Belina's antidote also still still have access to fireball also free action shock and wizard rend I don't know why these are duplicated on this list. Yeah, that's kind of weird other than the fact that uh, You get access to just this selection of things and you no longer have access to the previous ones Well, maybe I think that might be what's happening here and then level 18 and higher Belina's antidote fireball free action lightning shock toxic cloud and wizard rend Want to know what Wizard Ren does? Okay, good, because I was about to <laughs> just start blindly guessing. Do you want to guess? You want to just guess uh, what Wizard Ren does? It takes their hat, that little <laughs> well known wizard hat. It steals it your just wizard hat. Yoinks it. <laughs> no, it is a, an on touch spell. They have to physically touch you, and it will damage your spell points and paralyze you. So it sucks, it basically sucks out your magicka. It sucks your wizardness out. It sucks your wizardness out, and then you get paralyzed. That's miserable. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, especially if you're a magic user, right? Because now you're stuck and you also don't have any more magic. And it's an awkward violation of my personal space if you have to actually like put your hand on my shoulder or something yeah. to do it. I don't care for that either, actually. Yeah, you get, you get groped. Yeah, if you're uncomfortably close to me. It's like, yeah. ugh, no. You get, your, you get groped, and that makes you feel so uncomfortable. I'm trying to fight you. Like, please, please don't put your hand on my shoulder. I don't mm -hmm. like any or, of this. Or anywhere else on me. Uh, and so <laughs> after you're groped, you feel so you feel so violated that you both can't move, and you can no longer cast spells. I don't like it. Yep. I don't I don't care for that. Yeah. So, wizard rend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so wizard rend. So those are the spells I don't that magic that using creatures. We still have to get into the details about orcs and lycro like like lycanthropes. Like lycanthropes. Like That's how you say that. Lycanthropes. Like Words. Lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. We got more stuff to get to, but we have to go thank our patrons. So let's go do that, and then we're going to talk more about these other humanoid characters. So don't go anywhere. This is a mishmorak. Dragon boy, um, you are educating yourself to the Elder Scrolls lore cast. All right, here we are in the middle of the show. This is where we get to thank our patrons for being so awesome. Also, Lotus and I are cooking up some more things, maybe, to start adding to the Patreon for people yeah, who are subscribers. Yeah, make it a little better for people. We got some ideas, and I think some of them are pretty cool. So we'll, we'll have Just a... need to manage to iron them all out. <laughs> yeah, we got, we'll iron them out. Uh, yes, Dookie Man, this is live. <laughs> also, welcome to the stream. Also, That's such fantastic. a good name. Five stars. Dookie five Man. Stars. Does the 521 mean anything? I don't know. Let us know. Uh, but But we'll let you know. What's coming? It will make an official announcement soon. But uh, in the meantime, we have to thank our newest patrons. Uh, let's see. We've got X Lucem. I think it's L-U-C-E-M. Maybe Lucem. Uh, 
Rudis M and Jared H. Welcome to the Patreon. So glad that you are all here and joining us. Also, I have to shout out our Daedric Princes and our Daedric, Daedric Prince list is growing, Lotus. It may actually hit the number of actual Daedric Princes if it continues growing at this I was rate. Say, we're, 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 we're maxing out the spokes on the wheel here. <laughs> yeah, so we've got Blinding Vision, Fall, Hercene, who's in chat. Hercene, welcome. How's it going? Uh, just a little bit of chaos, Kiracy, and I was corrected. It's Peter, Peter R. Thank you so much oh, nice. for helping to support the show. Yeah, Peter joined our Discord and uh, jumped in and, and let me know. Yeah, it's pronounced like Peter. So now I know. Now I don't have to mess up your name. Thank you. Uh, welcome, welcome to the new, new patrons. Thank you for being here and supporting the show. If you are interested, if we've been helping you get through your work day or your commute or your workout or whatever, and you'd like to get some of the early episodes that are only up on the Patreon, some of the stuff we're cooking up, t-shirts, stickers, join us on Patreon chats, lots of fun stuff. Head over to patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast. Check everything out. We would love the support and we'd love to give you some cool stuff too. So go check that out. Also, Lotus, we got a new uh, review that came in. This is from Suspicious Reviewer, which makes me wonder if this is somebody that we're supposed to recognize based on the review. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you leave a five-star review in Apple on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it out in a future episode of the show. This one says, Suspicious Reviewer, dynamic. I recently started listening to you guys during my 12-hour shifts and also during my gym sessions. The lore and history of the Elder Scrolls series has always been intriguing to myself. You two do a tremendous job at going into detail about these things that we all love and putting them into perspective many can un understand. Keep up the good work. I would definitely love to see a segment done by Robots and Lotus relating the cultures of the races of Tamriel with real-life counterparts. A cultural deep dive, if you will. You know, we've uh, referenced some of those things when we we've referenced over some of those. That'd be kind of neat to just go through like just a, a full deep dive on like yeah how each rate because some of them are really strong pulls and some of them are really really unique. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I, I know that we've talked about it a little bit as we went through each of them, but to even just do one whole episode that's just like here's all the different cultures and here are the similarities or differences. Right, from right. Other stuff kind of put all in one place could be cool. So thanks for the idea. I love the idea for new episode ideas and things like that because it helps us give you guys more of the things that you're, you're interested in and also yeah. thanks for the five star review. Also, if you'd Appreciate like to help it. us out in other ways, you can leave a five-star rating on Spotify or whatever other platform you listen to this on. And you can also share the show with your friends and, and stuff like that. All of that stuff helps. And thank you so much for being here. All right, Lotus, we got to get back to orcs and like her, like, like her, whatever I call them. Here we go. You're listening to the Elder Scrolls lore cast, dear child of cities. That is why the Night Mother loves you. So, Lotus, do you have the Daggerfall user's guide? Yes. <laughs> I thought maybe. I, I thought maybe. I do. Was this the we, thing? Was this one of those things that came in the big box because this was like a 90s You know PC what? We'll just grab game. it right now. Hold on. It's right, right on the shelf behind Look, me. Here, I'm going to read this while you go get it. So in the Daggerfall user's guide, because these are these are the kinds of things that you would get with video games or PC games in the 90s, you would get descriptions and all sorts of other stuff that you could read when not playing the game. So in that guide, you, we get descriptions of things like orcs and lycanthropes and whatever. So, so go ahead. What they have is I didn't grab the full because there's the big box version because everything back in the day used to come in these giant big computer boxes. And there was kind of like your instruction manual, which is one of the user's guides. Yeah. And then for all the information, there was also Prima's version, which is yeah, the yeah. walkthrough as well as just lore galore and apparently a home depot receipt from <laughs> what wow what remember I got the second hand remember when you would go to like best buy and there would be just shelves shelves of like these game guides and then the internet happened and then they all slowly disappeared yes. i'm pretty sure prima's out of business now but i still i'm still very very big fan of this thing this is actually one of the less expensive like weird guide things mm -hmm. but um yeah same thing it's got like all the weird stuff in it along with walkthroughs as well as some critical glitches that were based yeah. out of the game yeah and a lot of these were designed or written by or investigated by people who weren't developers in the actual studio themselves yes. were these like it's external like usually people their third party right was kind right. of doing it so they're always a little bit off 
in either describing things in different ways that aren't the same way that the game would actually describe them or the de de developers would describe them or sometimes they even give you information that's not actually true because they were just in a rush to get something published and then they didn't realize they made a mistake or whatever so here's what the daggerfall user's guide says about orcs get ready for this from a distance an orc may resemble a large squat muscular man before the tusks become evident and the green skin and the piggish eyes are seen usually when a viewer is that close to an orc he or she is not taking notes about the details <laughs> this is so not written by the developers. Orcs are among the most common encounters around the Iliac Bay, particularly around the southern half of the Hrothgarian Mountains. They are a constantly savage group, ready for a fight no matter the odds. Some rather eccentric researchers have suggested that the orcs have a culture as ancient and sophisticated as ours, and that their seeming mindless barbarity is somehow related to rites of passage or tests of courage. It is highly likely that these researchers have never felt the sting of an orc captain's barbed axe. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is actually quoted from the book guide. I'm not 100% sure. This one sure. might be. It might be. Um, because at the also, end, it, love... it feels very uh, foreshadowy of the way orcs develop in the future. Yes, it's, it's what they form into, and it's very flowery text, which is a thing that I've kind of joked about that the series so far has had to do a couple times because they can't really, with sprite work and pixelated graphics, kind of show you some of the stuff that's happening. So they give you a very vivid description in like a little pop-up box in a lot of these games. So that yeah. definitely... That that tracks a decent amount. That feels like it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm curious now because it doesn't tell me specifically if this is quoted from the guide that's in the book or the user's guide as in the Prima guide. Uh, I but maybe assume, I think this is going to well, be the, the book Prima one. guide. Also has a bunch of chunks of it. I, that one sounds like because I haven't got these things memorized exactly, but I <laughs> I think that one actually might be officially written. Yeah, okay. Then as we get further into this, I think I'm a little bit more convinced about that too. So different types of orcs, you have orc, orc sergeant, orc shaman, and orc warlord. There's a variety that you can come across. All right, lycanthropes. I'm going to pronounce it correctly now. Uh, the user's guide has a quote about that as well. These cursed creatures are men by day, completely indistinguishable from, quote, normal men. Are you a normal man? Do you feel like a normal you know, man? I feel like... You know what? By day, I am. Oh, okay. We'll go with that. All right. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm really curious. Um, it goes on and says, and savage half-beast predators when the moon is full. The moon. Not moons. Yep. The moon. Look, you just have Secunda at the moment. There's only one, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, at least two lyc lycanthropes are common to the Iliac Bay environs, the werewolf and the wereboar. We've talked about this on other episodes, how there's yep. a variety of different were-creatures in Elder Scrolls. Yeah, there's many were-creatures. This yeah. game, yeah, you can be a were-boar or a werewolf. Yeah, werewolf is so much cooler than were-boar. I mean, if you had to pick. Yeah, so I am a werewolf, unintentionally in-game. Oh, in-game, not in... not. You weren't hinting at this being really who you are, being a normal man during the no, day? No, both. No. Okay. <laughs> I was just referring to it in Daggerfall for the sake of it. You only you uh, only play characters in games that actually reflect you in yes, reality. I only, yes, And exactly. both of those are werewolves. I, I, I'm always a dark elf. No, I'm <laughs> actually a dark elf. No, the... Um, they have, like, different ways they look as well. Um, and I think the stats are slightly different, but uh, yeah, it can it can kind of sneak up on you in this game. I mean, I know it can in any of the games. A lot of people are surprised when you first become uh, a lycanthrope or a vampire type of deal. The first yeah. time yeah. oftentimes catches you off guard, but they kind of give you a little bit of warning. Yeah, in this one, I kind of got a little bit of warning. And then I had like they give you a very ridiculous fever dream mm. of you just being naked. And then all of a sudden you're all werewolfy and i'm like what just happened to me <laughs> and boom werewolf thanks her scene her scene in chat says i got no, excited thanks, making her them. Scene. why'd you have to make were boars i mean wolves were cool enough did you have to have like slightly less cool wear monsters also <laughs> um so it, this this quote goes on and says the werewolf is only found in the woodlands of high rock and rarely in the jungles of hammerfell 
but the werebore is found everywhere, and it is the most fearsome opponent. Neither seems to be capable of a thought beyond bloodlust, and both are impervious to common weaponry. Their claws are keen as razors, and are somehow capable of transmitting the dreaded lycanthropy to those it strikes. While lycanthropy is a relatively simple disease for most temples to treat, few who survive a werebore attack are likely to do more than be thankful and rest for several days. Tis ironic. It's funny that he uses tis here. Tis, tis ironic. Tis ironic. The count of blessings when you have just been cursed. Um, yeah, so there's werebores and werewolves, and werebores are more common, and you have to use, like, silver in order to fight them, and that's part of the series from this point on so totally unrelated to lore but just gonna say that um like as everybody knows when you play these games in first person which wasn't really an option back then you were just in first person but um you're holding your sword you're holding your you can see your hand when you can the werewolf hand it's just this pair of little claws at the bottom of the screen <laughs> and it's the most casual thing because you have to feed uh this game it's not like a casual yeah, we can thing see them on the screen right now like right yeah, yeah. right now you got your little werewolf hands out oh, that's actually really funny timing it's like we planned this way better than we did yeah so okay so those little werewolf claws amazingly on screen right now that's amazing that that's synced up like that yeah. um but the reason i bring it up other than they look kind of ridiculous um but when you feed in this game, because it's required, otherwise, uh, unlike the other games where you get somewhat negative status effects from being a werewolf or a vampire, um, they're really extreme in this game. Like, uh, it brings you down so that you have one hit point if you don't feed. So basically, a strong breeze will kill you. Um, mm -hmm. So it forces you basically to feed. And in this game, to feed, all you do is just attack a civilian. That's it. And you just do this casual little rare. And it hits them, <laughs> and they just explode that's, into blood, and that's, that's just so it. Rawr. <laughs> yeah, and it's just gore, and that's then it's great. just like, all right, cool, you're all better now for a month. You just bathed in their explodey blood because yes. you just popped yep. them like I a balloon. I, I think it's just to prove you can rather than that you actually need to feed. Yeah, okay, so those are the were creatures. Uh, let's move on to Atronox because that's yes. a thing as well. Uh, you got Fire Atronox, Flesh Atronox, Ice Atronox, and Iron Atronox. And what's interesting is, uh, whereas in most of the other games, Atronox are almost always Daedric in origin, in this one, there are Atronox that are just basically like constructs from mages. Yeah, So it... it you deal a lot with them in the Mages Guild, actually. Yeah. Where it's like, oops, yeah. my Atronaut creation's running amok for this quest. Go kill it, please. Like, yeah. Okay, you just made one? Like, oh, sure. Yeah, there's somewhere between like an elemental and like a golem. It's kind of like fusing those yeah. two concepts together. Yeah, kind together. of. They're a little more golem esque at the time, or just like these, the, what a lot of people like flesh abominations and stuff like that uh, that you see in the later games. Yeah. Yeah, then we have undead creatures, and as we've talked about with the main quest line, undead play a big role in Daggerfall. You've got the Underking, you've got uh, Liches and Necromancers. This is a very, very common type of enemy. We have ancient Liches, ghosts, regular Liches, mummies, skeletal warriors, vampires, vampires ancient, vampire agent, not ancient vampire, vampire nope. agent, uh, wraiths and zombies, and some of these carry disease some of them you have to use special kinds of weapons to fight there's there's kind of a variety and they they show up in all sorts of different places they're pretty common anything else you want to say about undead creatures no i mean they're definitely very very common um in in the series especially whenever you deal with mana marco in any way yeah um uh, it's just this cave is literally just like what what do you do in your free time here man like this is this have is not great monster parties that's it just lots of parties <laughs> Just party, just party. He's just playing the jams and everybody's dancing. Everyone getting down. Everybody wants to dance with a skeletal warrior, right? <laughs> um, and then, and then the final group are Daedra. We get Daedra in Daggerfall. We do get Daedra. They've kind of made their full entrance into the series at this point. They're yeah, certainly not what they become, but they're there. They're there. We get these like demonic-ish creatures and there's a description from the Daggerfall user's guide for Daedra as well. Get this. The peasants have colorful terms for Daedra. Fiends, unclean spirits, the evil ones, the dark princes, uh? Uh? the gods of torment, the infernal ones, and most commonly demons. 
Those who wish to understand or battle these nightmarish beings rather than live in fear prefer, prefer the more circumspect term Daedra. It is nearly impossible to say anything definitive about Daedra, despite thousands of years of scholarship devoted to their nature. Their reputation as cruel, amoral geniuses of destruction. Geniuses of destruction was somebody's 90s, like, garage band. A hundred percent. Right? Uh, like, I probably went to high school with those kids. Um, seems to be most deserved. If they are true evil... Our definition of evil may need revision to include the complexity of their natures. So even in this early incanta in incantation is not the right word. Incarnation that's of the word Daedra. <laughs> that's the right word. Uh, speaking a lot has its drawbacks. Um, but even in this early <laughs> incarnation of Daedra, they were seen as more more than just simply evil demons that do bad things. They were more complex than that. They're weird. Like, they're weird, and it's even acknowledged that it's like, yeah, there's more to this. Something's just off. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're complex. Uh, Daedra appear to have a well-organized hierarchy, and the ones found in our world are doubtless the weakest of the lot. This tracks. I mean, this still feels pretty common in the later games. Yeah, you're not necessarily interacting with princes until you get them on their summoning days. And then it's like, okay, well, that takes a lot more effort than just like the Daedra bumbling around in the, in right. the world of Tamriel. Yeah, like it's way more common in even Oblivion or Skyrim to come across some mage's MP summoned than a Daedroth coming out of a portal or something right. like that. Right, or a Dramora Lord or something right. like that. It's like, okay, yeah, a little yeah. more intense. Yeah, but it goes on. It says, of course, the Fire Daedra, the Frost Daedra, the Seducer, and the Daedra Lord are among the most dangerous creatures in Tamriel. But there is certainly something greater out there in the world they call Oblivion. The world they call Oblivion. I still haven't really formalized exactly what yeah, this Oblivion they... thing is, but it's some other world, I guess. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> sure. It's fine. Yeah. And then it ends with, perhaps we are already doomed to fall beneath their fire. And it basically listed out the different types of Daedra that show up in Daggerfall already in this. Uh, Daedra Lord, Daedra Seducer, Daedroth, which wasn't mentioned, Fire Daedra, and Frost Daedra. So they're kind of like fancy demons with a little yeah. bit more going on. They, they really are. Back at this point in the series, they're still kind of essentially fancy demons. Um, then they haven't really fully come into their own, but you do get to interact with some of the Daedric princes, which is, you know, you can tell that there was a little more going on and they had started to flesh out the idea of these greater beings were controlling the lesser versions of them. And there was kind of like this hierarchy to them, which is, which is pretty neat that it started quite so early in the series and it's really been a staple to a lot of what the series becomes. Yeah. I mean, the Daedra are a huge part of elder i mean we we've devoted so many episodes talking about daedra and daedric princes those kinds of things they are a huge piece of the lore and the mythology of elder scrolls at this point uh and it's neat to see that this is kind of the origins of it right like this is the beginning yeah so the last thing we're going to cover to wrap up this episode are the different diseases that you can get from animals and undead because it mentions that in some of the articles that we've already talked about right yeah there this are stuff was actually Pretty impactful back in these things where it would literally inhibit ability to fast travel properly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you would die if you didn't treat it. And then you're just like, oh, I'm going to travel across the seas. And it's like, well, dude, now you have hyper scurvy. Like, what are you doing? Right. It just gets worse because as you yeah, travel, you're, you're not un, treating you're it. You're not yeah. treating it. So it's just right. Like yeah. OK. So if you come across an animal, then there's the potential that you could get brain fever. I've got that brain fever. I need some more cowbell. <laughs> um, plague and stomach rot. I feel like I've, in the real world, have had brain fever and stomach rot before, but not plague. <laughs> None of those sound great. Uh, the undead can give you way more. They're, they're, the list is much longer here. Brain fever, consumption. I've got the consumption. I, I died so much the consumption in the Elder Scrolls 1 arena. Yeah. I kept trying to make it back to town, and I had consumption, and I just kept passing away, and I'm like... I feel like that's a true story from a lot of people in history, in our own history. Yeah, I feel like that's just the Middle Ages. <laughs> right, it's the Middle Ages. Oh no, I died of consumption at the age of 22. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's you and like 15 other percent of the population. Yeah, the population of the right. planet. Right. 
Uh, so brain fever consumption dementia, which is a much more modern seeming <laughs> that's, problem. Yeah, that's that a problem that's with. still with us. Yes, very <laughs> much so. Care for it. Uh, and as people get older, they're more likely to get it because they're living right. long enough to actually have that as a problem. Yeah. Um, my wife does research on things like dementia and Alzheimer's. Oh, that's fascinating. Stuff like that. That's what she I actually feel like I do she's, that. <laughs> yeah, she's, she, she runs a research lab. That's one of the things that she does. Um, leprosy, plague, red death not exactly sure what red death is but we're going to dig into that uh, stomach rot swamp rot that's what happens when you don't change your underpants enough uh, oh <laughs> typhoid fever no, i don't like that and yellow okay fever. typhoid is literally just a thing. it's just a thing yeah yeah it's just a th it's just a thing uh just red death hissed juice red red death drains endurance and personality uh, it says here, you have contracted red death, a very serious disease which can quickly decimate a victim's endurance and even destroy personality until a cure is given or the victim dies. Decimate means divide by a tenth or reduce by a tenth. Did you know that? Like when a military, if you're in a military engagement and you're on the losing side and you were decimated by the other side, yeah. that means a tenth of your soldiers were killed or injured in the conflict. It's actually funny. But we use it wrong all the time, just like this. I've heard that, and until you just said that, I totally forgot about that. And then as soon yeah. as you said that, I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's totally, I, I know I've heard that before. Right. So yes. I, so if you actually take the real definition of defin, uh, decimate here, it means it reduces your endurance by a tenth, which isn't so super bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's not, it's not. Decimate, the way we use it in society now, means like to completely destroy. But that's not really what that means. Um, and then there's a list of other diseases you can get seemingly in other ways so this is fun as well not all diseases come from animals or undead so we've got blood rot brain brain fever caleron's curse which drains uh strength speed and agility cholera chrondiasis which drains intelligence uh cholera drains all attributes rapidly uh, consumption, which drains your willpower, power, agility, agility, and strength. I need to slow down so I can talk correctly. Dementia, <laughs> which drains your intelligence, willpower, and personality. Each of these is just like variations on just draining. Oh, very, things, right? yeah. It's varying versions of why you're getting messed up. Right. We mentioned leprosy, plague, red death, stomach rot, swamp rot, typhoid fever, witch's pox, which drains strength and endurance. Wizard fever. I've got the wizard fever. That's another name of a band that I wish I was in wizard fever can I, we form a band called wizard fever <laughs> what kind of music long, does wizard as long fever as we play? don't have any songs called wizard rent okay yeah agreed <laughs> um okay all right that's that's my stipulation wizard fever pr plays a combination of heavy metal and new wave merged together okay mm -hmm. all right i could mm -hmm. be on board with that also what Wizard is a term that's not as commonly used, I don't feel, in the series so much as yeah. mages now. Right. There's a lot of wizardry stuff back in this this earlier renditions of the series. Yeah, yeah. And her scene says they definitely had an airbrushed van. We need an airbrushed oh, van 100%. with a wizard on the side with a fever. Like okay. he's burning up. Like he's like, oh, my head. And All right. Yeah. And there's a, dra right. a dragon too. And then uh, wound rot, which sounds like what happens if you don't clean your wounds. Um, drain strength and endurance and then yellow fever. So there's more than just the diseases you can get from the monsters and the creatures and things because you can get them from other places as well. So there you go. That's the bestiary. Uh, it's kind of a quick overview. There's more details if you want to dig into this. You can always look, look up the article on UESP. It's also interesting because um, you can get this or a version of this in the game. It is a literal book, which is actually really interesting. I had like 12 of them on oh, stream cool. at one point and that's realized cool. it weighed like 50 pounds and what? my character was just like why are all these books so heavy <laughs> why, are, why are these books like bricks yeah. yeah yeah so it is something you can literally get in game which is kind of fun that's that's cool that's cool yeah yeah so thanks for joining us everybody this has been the bestiary of daggerfall and now you can see some of these things went on to create other stuff and to kind of grow and evolve in the series and some of these things just aren't really around anymore. Yeah, we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Lotus, you have anything else going on you want to share before we head out? Um, no, we actually didn't get to record an episode of Tales last weekend, so we're hoping to do it this weekend. Uh, I kind of really want to talk about uh, Gold Road and everything. I'm currently jonesing for Gold Road to actually drop on the 18th so that I can get my hands on what I haven't played. 
Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm still working on trying to get my schedule enough so that I can stream some more Daggerfall because I'm close to the end of the game, I believe. Um, hmm. and I just simply haven't had the time to finish out the, the let's play with everybody, but I'm hoping to do it soon. So stay tuned. I'll try to let everybody know with as much notice as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for that stuff. Also, uh, thanks for Hirstein reminding me about the random page, which I forget there every time. All right. I hit the button of the random UESP page. I hit the button. I hit the random page button and we got, this is a character. This is an NPC from Elder Scrolls Online. Her name is Maya, Myla, Mela, Mela. I, I love, I love the phonetically feeling this whole gotta, thing out. I'm gotta, really adding to it. Yeah, like a lich, I gotta touch it until all of a sudden I drain all of its magic spells, and then it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> stuck and can't move. Um, Mela Hinault is a Breton farmer who is taking refuge with her family in her farmhouse, while the Stornhelm Guard do battle with the blood fiends on their farm. She's the daughter of Genove and Melita Hinault. And the sister of Joan, maybe Yawan, I don't know, and Merrick <laughs> and Alt. There you go. That's it. Uh, there's a bunch of dialogue. Everybody's enriched from that She's one. She's <laughs> one of those characters you run into in the midst of a quest, and you can talk to her and ask her some questions and things. That's pretty much it. I'm not going to read the whole article because it's mostly just like the conversational the family tree stuff. and then all of the things they can say <laughs> right so there you go she's she shows up during some quests uh in stormhelm guard and or while stormhelm guard fights the blood fiends which we talked about undead monsters that's kind of similar yeah it's, you know what that was very on brand i take it all back yeah there you go so thanks mela <laughs> there you go <laughs> Thanks for reminding me to hit the random page. Also, if you want to check out any of the other stuff I'm doing, like the Fallout lore cast or the Lord of the Rings lore cast. Oh, by the way, if you're into Lord of the Rings and you want a deep dive, like a real deep dive on The Hobbit, we just started that. So those are going to be the new episodes. We're doing a very close reading of The Hobbit, and I'm so excited about it. So these books are so wonderful. So if you want to see what influenced games like The Elder Scrolls through one of the most printed book ever, over a hundred million copies by like the 1960s or something like that. It's insane. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Crazy stuff. It's up there with like the Bible. So <laughs> there you go. So go check out my other stuff, robotsradio.net for my stuff and a bunch of other people, a bunch of other people creating cool stuff on the network. Lots of fun content out there for you to dive into. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you for being here for the live stream. And I hope you enjoyed the fun little over overlay behind us with all the action from the game. Uh, let us know your thoughts on anything that we brought up today. Jump in the Discord and have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. See you later. Thanks for tuning in to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. Check out robotsradio.net for more podcasts just like this. And join us on the Robots Radio Discord. Be part of a community of over 5,000 people who are excited about video games and so much more. Robots Radio. Games. Lore. Stories. Community. Just press play.